Uh, so with, uh, without further ado, let's get uh, started on the file upload and download. In the case of uh, the file upload and download, uh, some of the recent versions of IronSP Designer have made uh, a file uploading and download to the database very, very easy because they, it is completely built in into IronSP Designer. And so what I want to do is quickly demonstrate that. And certainly, you can also do other code customizations to upload the file uh, to a file system as well. So in the case of a file upload and download, uh, what is our goal? Our goal here is to essentially upload a file to the database. And one other thing that we need to do is not just upload the file to a database, but also we want to save the file name in a particular, in a companion field uh, that, uh, so in, in the database. And then when we are ready to download that file, so when we want to display that file uh, for the benefit of the end user, what we would like to do is use that companion file name field as a link in order to download that file. So that's what our goal is in this particular um, webinar here. And that's what we're going to try to show you how to accomplish, uh, accomplish that. So if you look here on the page, you've got essentially a bunch of files, like an Excel file and, and so on. And if you click that, then it'll open up that particular file in that correct format, in the Excel format, or bring a Word or PDF or any other application as necessary. Our strategy uh, in 6.2 is very easy uh, in terms of what we need to accomplish. What we need to do here is we need to upload, we need to add a file upload control and to save the file name in the database, and then create the download file link and set that link. Uh, to use the file, uh, to use the companion file name field, basically. First, before we get started into that, let's talk about a little bit about the database schema because that makes it a very important component of this customization. If you're using Microsoft Access, then imagine if you are having an attach a, a table, let's say called attachment then most likely field type that you're going to use based on what is available in Microsoft Access is the OLE object field. So if you look at this particular schema that I'm showing here on the screen, you've got an attachment ID, you've got a file name, a file content and description. The file name, of course, is a text field, and the file content is an OLE object. Uh, this is the best option available for saving large binary objects, essentially blobs, if you will, binary large objects in an access database. Uh, there are no other uh, you know, image or other data types that are available uh, in Microsoft Access uh, for the benefit of storing uh, large binary objects. If you're using uh, the database uh, uh, Microsoft SQL Server, one example is SQL Server 2005, but I know this works in both 2000 as well as in 2008. Uh, is that what you want to be able to do uh, is have an image uh, data type, basically, uh, that is available uh, to you in, uh, in uh, SQL Server. This will allow you to, of course, uh, upload not just images, but really any kind of binary object that is available uh, to you as well. So that is the schema that we're going to have either in Access or in Microsoft SQL Server. Let's get started in what we want to accomplish over here. So at this point in time, let me switch over to IronSpeed Designer and show you how to accomplish that uh, in, in IronSpeed Designer. So if I switch over, I previously have created an application, and I have the attachments um, table that I have already linked with. It's called actually the file attachments uh, table here. And one of the things that you will notice in the file attachments table uh, is that you've already got IronSP Designer automatically recognized. This is a page that was automatically created by IronSP Designer. IronSP Designer automatically recognized this as a file content field and, in fact, created a link using the file name field automatically. But if you are, you know, so what we do is we look for common uh, field naming convention, for example, file content, file attachment, attachment, uh, and so on. Uh, we also look for file name or you know path name or things like that, and automatically create that, uh, uh, create the file attachment link and file upload controls. But if you are using a different uh, language or you have named it something different, for example, you know my favorite uh, file or, or something to that effect, then obviously there is a little bit more work on your part in order to accomplish this thing. And let's take a look at how you can you can accomplish that. So let me switch over to design mode uh, here. 
I'm using version 6.2 that was released um, uh, last week, earlier last week. And what this allows you to do effectively is, in this case, it has already been created for me. But if I double click, and I'm now looking at essentially the display portion of it, not the upload portion. So let's start with the display portion. And if I double click on the file content field, you will notice some of the settings here that are important to us uh, in terms of how we set up uh, this particular, uh, this particular uh, control. So you will notice that in the case of the file content field, what it is is that the file content control type is set to file download. Notice over here that this is set to file download. So because we are uh, trying to accomplish this for in terms of display purposes uh, here. If you look at the display tab, then what I have is not only do I set it to be visible, but there is something specific that is available to me in the display style options, and this is a very important component of this thing. We have something called a file name field, and this is really what, what I call a companion field that is available to you. The companion field is essentially what is going to be displayed to the user. So when I look at essentially um, the display saying, you know, here is an Excel file or here is my, um, you know, whatever the, uh, the requirements document is or whatever other document I have, I am using the actual name to display that particular link. And that's why the, I have this companion uh, field. So in effect, that's all I really need to do. Uh, in 6.2, it actually makes it even easier because I can simply go ahead and drag and drop uh, the, the file companion field and display it in, in this particular case in the table row here. And in this case, of course, since I already have one, it's going to create a new one called file content one. But it automatically would be set for me with file download and with the display uh, set to file name, uh, file name uh, field as well. So that's all you really need to do in order to actually create a file download link for the purpose of displaying the link to the user. So if I just simply press OK and switch over to Live Preview, obviously I'm going to see a second column now with the file content link again uh, displaying with the same, uh, same name. Now once I display that, then I will switch over to how to actually upload. So notice how I have got a PDF file and a Word file. Now in some cases, I may not have the file name field available. So if I go back, and in this particular case, I just change it just to please select and press the OK button, switch over to Live Preview, what I'm going to see is a link with just the words open file uh, displayed on the screen. This will allow, uh, of course, the words open file are coming from a resource file in the, in, from the ResX file. So if you're using languages other than English, uh, you may need to actually update that particular, uh, that particular um, Sorry about that. That uh, particular um, uh, text here, so that in whatever other language you've got, uh, you've got that. Okay, so that's uh, that's what you can do for file download. Now let's take a look at file upload. I'm going to switch over to the add page and I'm look at it in live preview itself. And you will notice that what I have here is, in the case of add file attachments, a file content field that is displayed, and essentially a file upload control that is available here so that I can go through and look at uh, the files that are, I'm uploading. So I can go through and attach a particular file, for example, and select, select that over here. So let me not do that at this point in time, but let me switch over to the design mode and talk a little bit about how does that look like. So I'm looking at a record control over here, and I'm looking at within that record control the file content field. If I double click on this one, I bring up the page properties dialog box. Let's look at the control type. The control type that is set is called a file upload control. And the file upload control basically will display, as, as, as we just saw, a file upload browse button next to it. Keep in mind that this is a specific control that is available in HTML and by extension in ASPX and .NET effectively. It is not two different controls that some people get confused with, a text box and a browse button. It is a single control called the file upload control, basically, uh, that is available to you in HTML. So we automatically use that control, and that gets displayed here. And then when I switch over to the display tab, again, I have the same kind of thing that I saw on a file download, 
but also available in file upload. And this is where the, my companion file name field is displayed. If I don't have a companion file name field, what happens is on the file upload, the file name is then going to be discarded and not saved in any uh, field in the database. However, if I specify the companion field, in this case the file name field, then the file name is going to be extracted, stripped off all of the folder or pa uh, directory paths before that, and only the name of the file uh, is going to be then stored in this companion, uh, companion field. So just as I showed you before, when you switch over to the live preview, you can effectively have the file name uh, field displayed over here. So with that, uh, I think that kind of just quickly shows you how to accomplish the file upload and file uh, download links, uh, especially saving into a database. Um, you may actually have a variety of different, um, different uh, other customizations that you may want to do. For example, upload it to a file system. Uh, for example, and for that, we if you go to the Iron Speed Designer code customization uh, within the within the product, as an example, uh, you'll be able to see some of the other um, code customizations that are available to you. Keep in mind that there are certain restrictions uh, when you upload to a file system, uh, ex uh, restrictions that are imposed by .NET and by IIS that you need to keep in mind. So, if you go to attachments, for example, we've got the download a file from the file system. Uh, specifically, the, the details have to do with uh, uploading, uh, sorry, uploading attachment, uh, uploading a file to the file system. Uh, specifically, these have to do with issues like medium trust, for example. Uh, in medium trust, you are not able to write to a fo folder uh, within your application or outside of your application. You have to provide a higher level of trust in order to upload a file to the file system. Uh, secondly, uh, you have to manage uh, essentially file naming so that there is no collision. So let's say if I were to upload a file called x.doc and you come in and upload a document called x.doc, uh, somehow the second person needs to essentially be given a different file name rather than overwriting the existing file name. The third problem with uploading to the file system is that there needs to be some amount of cleanup that needs to happen uh, as well. Uh, presumably these files are not resident there forever. Uh, so somebody needs to go through and flush them periodically, either through a process, an automatic process, or through uh, some other manual process that you may have to uh, go through. So that's something that, uh, that you need to worry about when you're uploading a file to the file system. Uh, that's why there is a code customization that is available to you that you can accomplish, uh, accomplish that uh, rather than a kind of a standard control that is available to you. So let me at this point in time.